I'm going to talk to you about the key of high performance and truly diverse teams. My name is Anique Soutermeer, and I'm one of the two co-founders of Hightech Excel, the Hightech Startup Accelerator. We at Hightech Excel truly believe that anyone with a good idea who wants to improve the lives of others and dream about making an impact deserve a fair chance of becoming an entrepreneur. And that is where we help. We help high-tech startups to really flourish, to build their business. And we have been doing that ever since 2013. We started in Eindhoven, so we decided for high-tech startups in these specific domains. Because these are the domains that we are really good in at this region. This is where we can make a difference. We're located at the high-tech campus. And here, we've gathered more than 300 mentors to support these startups every day with their connections and their knowledge. And this is one of the reasons why we're at this location. At this location, there are more than 170 companies in the high-tech domain. So as easy as you go out for a, buy a cup of coffee, as easy you go out and visit a customer, a partner, or a supplier. And that makes all the difference. You might wonder, but these high-tech startups with a great idea and maybe even a greater technology, why do they need help? Well, we know by now that building a great technology is something completely different from building a business. You need to get funding, customer traction, and you need to find the right scalable business model, right? And that is where we come in. We bring in the different skill set. Are we successful? Last six years, I will leave that up to you, but let me at least show you some statistics. Right. We've accelerated 66 startups up until now who have together raised more than 62 million. They have created 1,945 jobs up till now in this region, talking about economical impact. We have a survival rate of 71%. And that's pretty awesome if you know that typically 95% of startups do not make it. Moreover, we have identified 12 stars. And stars are those companies who are ready to scale and are really their business is taking off. It's not only the startups that we are supporting by now. Also, corporates need help on innovation. They need help to stay ahead of the game. So we have supported more than 250 corporate projects by now by doing it the startup way. We get them through completely the same program as our startups, and it works. We also support them with global challenges, because you cannot do anything yourself, even if you're a corporate. And in the global challenge, we look for a specific theme that this corporate wants to excel. And we scout globally to find those startups who are exactly good in that domain. And then when we introduce them to each other, it doesn't necessarily go by itself, this cooperation. So we support them in really, truly getting an effective corporate startup collaboration going. Now, of course, we cannot do this alone as being co-founders. I'm really happy and proud to introduce you to our team. We have 28 people in total. Guys, girls, ratio 40 versus 60. So yes, in this high-tech domain, we outperform the guys in numbers. And to be honest, I think they are still recovering from that fact. <laughs> we have 13 nationalities, of which 45 is Dutch and 55% is non-Dutch. Ages, the youngest is 22 and the oldest is 62. He is our only baby boomer in our company. <laughs> the guy here. <laughs> and just very typically at this slide, you stand up, right? 
Good, so that's our baby boomer. Then we have about seven people of my generation, 16 generation Ys, which is also called the millennials. And then we even already have four people of generation Z. They were born after 1995. <clears throat> so, you can imagine that this is quite a diverse team, right? And it's a lot of fun, but it also does not come by itself. We had a fair share of learnings, not only with our own team, but also with the startup teams and also with the corporate teams. And I would really like to share our best practices, but for sure also our lessons learned. So let's start at the beginning. We all know what team stands for, right? Together, everyone achieves more. A team should be much more than the sum of individuals. We take this a step further. The only differentiating factor between you and competition is your team. Because business models will be copied and IP will be worked around. That's no problem. But a team, you cannot copy. And the teamwork is what makes the dream work. We even take this a step further. This is a list of the top 20 reasons why startups fail. Last year, 101 post-mortem startups were interviewed. Reason number one, there was no market need. Reason number two, they ran out of cash. It happens. Reason number three, we didn't have the right team. A bit lower, 12, 14, we didn't have the right passion or we didn't get along quite well with our investors. And unfortunately, even at number 20, there is burnout. So you might think these red boxes are all related to the team. But let's look again, because who is responsible for making a product that no one wants? It's the team, right? And who is responsible for not running out of cash? That's also the team. So I dare to say that 100% of startup failure is directly linked to the team. So what, what does it take then to build a successful and a high performance team? There are a number of frameworks out there from 5 to 15 characteristics. Today we chose for this one. Of course it has the purpose. And for those of you who were here with uh, uh, Tessie with the light year proposition, I think that's a proposition that gives you goosebumps. That is a good purpose. Of course, there are open communication on which we, I think, can spend a full day on, but let's not right now. There is trust, there's shared leadership. There is the same working procedures that we need to agree on. But there is a spot missing, that's number eight. And that's building on differences. And we truly believe that the more diverse you are, the harder it is to really agree on all the other seven characteristics in this case. But if you do, the reward is big, because you will outperform any homogeneous team anytime. Diversity is a hot topic. I think it was the most used word today, but not only today. If you Google it, 1.5 billion hits. At Forbes, only last month, there were nearly 300 articles about this subject. The Harvard Business Review, if you check their titles, more than 130 articles in the last six months had the title Diversity. And if you go to managementbook.nl, which you typically do in the Netherlands if you want to find a book, and you type in Diversity, you need to choose between 212 books. So diversity is hot, and I want to state six reasons why diversity should be hot. First, most uh, uh, known, we've also just heard it from Janneke, it is already researched that diversity increases innovation revenues. And more specific, gender diversity and ethnic diversity has a positive outcome on your profitability. We know all of this, right? Diversity also avoids groupthink. And groupthink is a typically psychological phenomenon that happens to homogeneous teams. 
they tend to become so close and they bond so tightly together that it's not done anymore to have a different opinion because that means you're not part of the group anymore. And a lot of opinions state that this is the reason why we had the Volkswagen emission scandal, for instance. Well, let's at least agree if we had more diversity in those boards, we had a higher chance that someone would have raised the question and said, should we be really doing this? Third reason why diversity is so important. It's the key to your war for talent. There is simply a sense of urgency now. Our labor population is decreasing. Baby boomers, not that one, but the rest, is leaving their jobs. And there is less talent coming in. So we simply cannot afford anymore to not take in more other uh, groups, more women, but also more different types in our organization. There is a sense of urgency, unfortunately, but it helps. Reason number five. We understand better our customer needs, which has a direct impact on client satisfaction as well as revenues. And why? Yeah, it's actually fa fairly simple. We're becoming more global, so we have a bigger diversity of our clients. And if we want to understand these clients, we need to mirror ourselves as our organization to understand what they are looking for. Reason number four. Let's go to reason number five. We're almost there. I said six. I think you heard this before as well. If you want to create tech for everyone to use, we need to create it with everyone who's going to use it. You know the Google example, maybe, that uh, Google speech recognition is working 70% better for guy speech than girl speech. And moreover, if you look at the Amazon face recognition, it has a lot of difficulties with recognizing dark-skinned people. So we should be creating tech for everyone if you want to use it for everyone. Reason number six, very obvious. We should want diversity because it's the right thing to do. It's in our sustainability goals of the United Nations, where we state gender equality and everyone deserves a fair chance of a living and growth. So if diversity is a business asset, and I truly believe we should look at this, it's a business asset, what do the stats tell us? You've heard this before today. 71% of organizations in the interview last year with Deloitte said, yes, we have a diversity and inclusion strategy. Unfortunately, only 12% is achieving some of those goals. And if we look at the 85 Dutch listed companies who hold together a lot of positions in their board of directors as well as in their supervisory boards, only 19% of these seats are taken by women. 18 of these 85 companies have no women at all in their boards. So diversity is a business asset. We're not fully harnessing the full potential of it, right? Why is it then so difficult? I'll give you three reasons. There's the buddy system, and I think Janneke told you already a bit about this. The buddy system means that we as humans just tend to like really work with people that are equal, like us. They share the same thoughts, they have the same humor. We understand each other, and you know what? That also boosts my ego, because they agree on the same stuff as I do. This also happens when you're doing interviews. If you like it or not, you will be having the buddy syndrome. So what we typically do in our uh, recruitment to make sure that Anique is not looking for more Aniques and Guus is not looking for more Guuses, let's do a casting event with our whole team, or at least as many as people as who can join. And we do 10 minutes speed dating with all people who want to be in this job. And we rank and rate after those 10 minutes, otherwise you will forget. Then when we've seen everyone, we look at all this data. And only if we all agree, and there's no real substantial reason why we shouldn't be hiring this guy or girl, they get in. That's a way of making sure that you're hiring the right people. 
I really like this quote. I found it somewhere. Um, not sure where it was. Uh, Diversity is only a problem when you always want to be right. And this is a nice one to just let it linger. Reason number two, diversity can also be pretty overwhelming, let's be honest. Because there's gender diversity, age diversity, cultural diversity, background diversity, uh, IQ diversity, personality diversity, and that's only the start of it. And all of these differences can feel a bit like the very old Indian parable of the six blind guys who knew there was a new animal in town. And they went to check it out. And the guy standing at the beginning said, yeah, I'm quite sure it's something with a spear. Whilst the guy at the end said, a spear? I'm quite sure I feel something uh, like a rope. And the guy in the middle has no clue what they're talking about, because in the middle it certainly feels like a wall. And I started getting irritated. Why are you lying? Because I'm quite sure that I am right. I started to get irritated, frustrated, and in a fight. Seventh guy comes in and he said, guys, what's going on? Because if you could only take off your glasses, you are looking at the same animal, but just from a different perspective. And this is how hard diversity can be. Cultural diversity has been studied a lot for, let's call it decades for sure. I typically like this cultural map done by Aaron Myers, very bright professor at INSEAD. And she has stated eight different dimensions of culture, like trust, the way we give feedback, the way we uh, lead, the way we make decisions. And she plotted out more than 24 companies on these eight dimensions. This is actually the cultural map of one of the biggest corporates in the Netherlands, who have offices at all these locations. So imagine these are all your colleagues, and you work with them every day. What happens in this digital world, right? How are you going to make sense out of this? Diversity can be pretty hard. Also note where the Netherlands is, because in the Netherlands we say yeah, we're, we're an open culture, everyone can, uh, can join, we're, we're quite flexible. We are the toughest ones almost on all dimensions, we're the most extreme. So let's look at this again, eh? because for a lot of cultures the Netherlands is really something different. What's also different are these two blood types, startups and corporates. Startups tend to be flexible, agile, they pivot overnight because customers ask them to. But they can also be too much sure of themselves. Because they didn't do anything yet, right? They have a great idea. Maybe they have a great technology. In the best case, they have an MVP, a minimum viable product. Whilst these corporates, yeah, they've made it, right? They have global businesses, they have a brand, they have a lot of expertise and they have a lot to, to work with. They have a lot of customers, so they've proven themselves. But being so big, they also have a lot of stakeholder management, they have a lot of procedures, and they're really slow. Sometimes even maybe a bit boring because of all these procedures. If you get these two uh, startups and corporates together with all these stereotypes I was just telling you, it might be really difficult to set up something, right? So we start with, what can you learn from each other? Startups, look at what you can learn from these corporates. They have done the global scaling, they know what it is, they've built up their supply chains, they have all this expertise, which you don't even have an idea of that you need all of that. And corporates, look at these startups, because they have very fast learning loops. And they do know how to talk to customers and understand what works and not. So there's a lot to give as long as you start working with these differences. But it can be also really close by, even in our team with people, my gender, my age, maybe with the same background, you need to start understanding each other. We use the Facet 5 tooling, by the way, for all our teams to get them in a understanding framework of how do I tick 
and how does the rest of my team members tick? What are we probably very good in and what are we not so good in? I'm pretty high on control, as my team members might know. So if I need to do a workshop, I tend to really want to have this done a week before. Now, the easiest for me is to find one of these guys or girls who has the same, because then we're both working really hard and we get stuff done on time. But it actually works much better if I work with someone who is a bit more flexible. And who says, we have time to figure this out, because that flexibility you also get into your workshops. Whilst I might still be thinking, but we have this agenda and we need to speed up, the group is asking for something else, and a more flexible person can actually do this better than I can. So figure out the differences and embrace them. I promised you three points why diversity is so hard. It can be overwhelming. We have this buddy system, and there we go. Unconscious bias. We make 35,000 decisions every day. And that's a lot, so we must be very efficient. And we do this with our automatic pilot. And you've heard today, I think a couple of times already, it's good to be efficient, but there's also a lot of stereotyping and biases in there. Guys are better in math. Girls should also spend time at home with their kids. I know that that unconscious bias is still somewhere in my head at least once a week. I'm not sure how that is for you. So unconscious bias. It is fine to have it because you're human. You cannot do anything about this. And let's be honest, the, even the most um, balanced out purpose who have, have equality highly on the list also still have unconscious bias. There's a very interesting research from Harvard University together with an a number of other universities who've created the implicit association tests. And you can check your own biases on gender, sex orientation. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> I forgot to click. Um, on, on a number of uh, uh, cultural biases, they have one big disclaimer. Be aware that whatever you're filling in might result in a report that you don't like. But don't call us, eh? you filled it in. There's, there's a lot of nice tests. Uh, please have a go at it. Concluding, we're almost there. Diversity is a business asset. We're not fully harnessing the key potential of this. Why? Because we're human. And diversity can be pretty hard. So how can we make diversity work? And I have a three-minute video where you can see how people get enabled to literally step out of boxes. It's easy to put people in boxes. There's us, and there's them. <coughs> the high earners, and those just getting by. Those we trust, and those we try to avoid. There's the new Danes, and those who've always been here. The people from the countryside, and those who've never seen a cow. The religious, and the self-confident. There are those we share something with, and those we don't share anything with. Welcome. Jeg kommer til at stille jer nogle spørgsmål i dag. Nogle af dem kan godt være lidt personlige, men jeg håber, I vil svare ærligt på dem. Hvem her i rummet var klassens klog? Hvem er bonusforældre? And then suddenly, there's us. We who believe in life after death. We who've seen UFOs. And all of us who love to dance. We who've been bullied. We who've bullied others.
And then there's us, the lucky ones who've had sex this past week. We who are broken-hearted. We who are madly in love. We who feel lonely. We who are bisexual. And we who acknowledge the courage of others. We who have found the meaning of life. And we who have saved lives. And then there's all of us who just love Denmark. So maybe there's more that brings us together than we think. TV2 Denmark. All that we share. When these big guys with the tattoos came in, I felt myself doing... I didn't do that on purpose, eh? that just happens. That's an unconscious bias. Whilst as these nurses come in, I think, oh, they will take care of me. I also didn't do that on purpose, that just happens. But what happens to get out of boxes is that you need to find commonalities, as difficult as it is. But once you do that, you see people looking up people daring to look other people in the eye. There's a bit of humor, and it all gets a bit less tension. There's evil people hugging, and they start talking. And that is exactly your first step of conquering diversity. What helps then is to fill in a team canvas. We know the business canvases, where you fully get into line how your business will look like. This is as equally important Figure out what is your purpose, everyone's own personal purpose. How are we going to work together? What are our strengths and our weaknesses? What are our roles and who are the people who are in? And with more diverse teams, this tends to be harder and more intense because we don't talk the same language. What is really important then is to create an open environment. Let's call it psychological safety. And this has been the result of the Project Aristotle of Google, who did a lot of research with more than 180 teams, so more than 250 separate attributes, and did more than 200 investi uh, uh, interviews. They were figuring out what does it take to build the highest performance team. And there we go. Ultimate key to success is psychological safety. Two very important, crucial behaviors. Equal turn-taking. Everyone at the table gets his fair chance of attention and is heard. That is called true engagement and interaction. This is the open mindset that you need to have. That even goes to the extent of, can we please forget about iPhones and laptops and st stop using that because it doesn't show engagement, does it? So diversity is a business asset. We're not fully using it yet, because we're human, and it is also really hard. And the key is psychological safety. If we don't create this, you will not have everyone to their full potential at the table. You're not harvesting your diversity potential yet. That means you're not having that as a business asset. And in this global competing world, you simply cannot neglect this. I would say. Wrapping up, I promise you we're wrapping up. Remember the six reasons why diversity is crucial. And it's so hard because we're human, we have the body syndrome. Diversity can be pretty overwhelming, can it? And then there's also this unconscious bias that I don't even know about. Key to making it work is create an open mindset and a genuine interest in the other person. Find commonalities. Create a safe environment to understand each other. Embrace your diversity because it's going to take you further. Keep track of your psychological safety. We have three simple buttons at the end of the week with our teams in the program. Are you happy? Are you neutral? Or are you unhappy? 
just by the fact that we're asking that, we're getting a lot of data about how are we doing with the happiness factor in our program. But the teams themselves start wondering, am I happy? Were you happy? Why are we not happy? Or why are we doing so well? Keep track of this psychological safety and keep diversity on the agenda. It's not just a workshop. It's not just a speech of a bit more than 30 minutes. It starts with you. Thank you. <laughs>